Pobre stands for Persistence of Vision Ray Tracing. It is a lightweight open source program. I would like to share why I'm so excited about it. I use it since more than 20 years, regularly mostly for quick illustrations or animations. To the left of the slide you see an example of a program. It is a simple text file containing a few lines of code. After running it through Povere, Povere, the picture to the right has appeared. Due to its simplicity, it's possible, for example, to have other programs write Povere files, but it's a full-fledged Turing complete programming language. If you look at the program, it consists of text files. Project also comes with textures or meshes, which are pictures, but everything is visible. Unlike with modelers, where you might need to unlock some secret flags, this is not necessary here. You can run it on any platform and it gives the same result. The program is ideal for a mathematical mind. Uh, it illustrates physical concepts. It is open source. It has not changed much, like Tech has for uh, writing text. Almost all code I wrote 20 years ago still runs today without any modification. <clears throat> Here's the code which renders the solid shown. Uh, you see first the camera is, pa camera parameters are described where the camera is, where it looks like, where it looks at. Then there are some light sources. There are two light sources here, the background color. Uh, there is a macro for a pigment, for a, for a texture. And then uh, comes the geometry. So uh, we take a sphere and cut out three uh, cylinders or take away three cylinders then all together is shown and rotated. Uh, so there's also an animation parameter clock. <clears throat> so uh, here is, so there are only three files uh, uh, involved. First of all, the program, text program. There's an initial initialization file which tells how big the program is rendered and how accurate it is rendered. And then you run it and then you get the text file, which is a, peer, a, a ping file. <clears throat> You can also animate it. So here we see an animation uh, uh, initialization file, which says that it should uh, run, it should uh, be 1,200 times 8,800 pixels, and uh, it's a cyclic animation with 20 frames. Time parameter goes from zero to one. Uh, a lot of geometric data is already available in archives and libraries. In this case, we took a famous mesh from the Stanford University Computer Lab Graphics Laboratory and rendered it. The mesh contains the geometric data of Lucy, a statue, and the mesh is stored in a, se a separate file. So here is the Povere program. Uh, it uses a bit more sophisticated lightning, has a, there's a wall and a, a floor included and uh, the statue is painted in, in gold. Uh, how do we, did we get the mesh? <clears throat> so the Stanford repository has a .ply file, which is a binary file, but Mathematica knows how to read this and transform it into uh, just text file using triangles. And uh, so this is then included into Pobre. Uh, of course, there are also converters which do that for you. Uh, and so here is another example uh, where we we'll use a loop uh, to stack some sticks together. So each stick is a cylinder which is painted with a checkerboard texture and each step the stick is rotated and translated. Then there is also a clock parameter so that we see now this uh, uh, animated. It's very simple but you see that it looks nice. Uh, a few lines of code have produced this. Uh, the, the recording was done in 4K but uh, it was here reduced in size a little bit to, uh, for, the, for the slides. In, in principle, you could render it in any uh, resolution. <clears throat> it's a classic, the Lorentz system. It illustrates how the ray tracer solves differential equations. So here's the full code for that. This is the Povere file. So you see it actually makes simple Euler step iterations. This could be done more sophisticated with a uh, runge Kutta, of course. Uh, and also uh, what is included here is uh, uh, the color is telling how fast the particle moves at a specific time. So this is an old example uh, which I did for a website, 1998, mathematik.com, graphics uh, uh, could be done also with a computer algebra system, but it would not be able to, to do the glass part so nicely. So here Mathematica was actually writing the Povere files, which were then rendered 
Um, so this is another uh, illustration uh, where uh, done for a course uh, website illustrating Stokes' theorem, the dynamo, uh, the Maxwell's equation tell that uh, if you move uh, a wire around in a, a magnetic field then you get uh, uh, an electric field and so uh, power. Uh, this is an illustration from uh, also for a uh, for a website uh, at, uh, and here again uh, a piano also for this website mathematic.com which was then a, a javascript animated animated uh, uh, website so they were all these parts were actually written by by Povre and this for a talk uh, uh, at the Harvard Math Department in 2000 about the technology. So this was kind of just a, a little gag. Uh, the, 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 the helicopter flies onto this uh, onto this uh, uh, surface. Uh, also for course slides, etc. This is great. With a few lines, you can make nice uh, animations. This was for uh, also for Mathematic.com. The Stefan surface is a non-rigid rigid polyhedron. Uh, I show this because Povera was doing here all the deformation geometry computations, so intersecting spheres, etc. All the sol solving equations. Uh, this was done for a course website in 2001 for Math21A. Uh, also, this was uh, done in Povre. Uh, so here, the illustration of the flux, which we teach in multivariable calculus. Uh, note that the arrows also have deformed here. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, or, the, or the concept of a parameterization of a surface. If a falling ball problem for a course website, the, the, the coin was scanned uh, uh, and then the, uh, the texture was then used for Povre. Some leaves for a tree, for an L system. This was for a, a, a family website, uh, rhetoric.ch, where uh, it is an illustration of a, a, a Swiss egg which gets <laughs> harassed. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a story of a uh, hauler. Uh, and uh, so the eyes and the, and the, and the hat uh, are textures here, but the rest are just simple surfaces. <clears throat> also, this is for a website, ryanfall.com. So it shows uh, how the metal kind of nicely reflects uh, the, the, the surroundings. This was rhetoric. This is, a, a CH was originally kind of on a on a on a book theme. So I built this book with with pages from the website, and uh, so it's. Uh, uh, it has been replaced uh, about 10 years ago. <clears throat> All this for a slide uh, uh, about computer vision for a structure of motion, uh, for the structure of motion problem. <clears throat> Here's an example where a C program has written the Povre files. Actually, uh, uh, so this was a little bit heavy for Povre. So there are 120 particles and they all interact. So it's a 120 particle problem, uh, interaction problem, and then uh, the C program was writing the Povre files, the Povre files uh, then rendered. So here's the animation. So this is uh, uh, all the particles interact with each other. And so this is uh, actually an integral system because we took a quadratic potential. So this was a demonstration in uh, uh, 2006 about uh, how to use video. So the video was exported as, as, as frames and then the frames were rendered in, in, in Povre with some illustrating some some facts, uh, some things which one can do like reflections, uh, Google Earth, which is nice that one can also do panorama 360 degree stuff like here. This is a 360 degree panorama rendered within Povre, just the parameter that the, the camera was done uh, in such a way. So this is an animation of some arrows moving around and so you are standing there and see this in a panorama picture or here some cubes turning around. This was done for my personal for, for my personal website as as a as a top illustration. <clears throat> also this uh, some mathematical objects they were all done in in Povre and then included and, and arranged uh, around in a, in a scene and, and you see the 360 degree now, uh, with more skills, uh, you can produce quite amazing things. So here's some examples from some leading Povre artists. Jem Viv Picker has developed some fantastic lighting macros. This is all just math, but look at the detail how this has been implemented. An example from uh, Jan and Ethel McKay from 1999. There's Jill Tran has 
done this nice airplane built with wood. Wood and metal textures are already built in, you don't have to include them. Uh, another example of Jeanne Vive Picker, it shows uh, kind of this uh, uh, possibility to, to, to produce nice textures, metal, uh, rust. Uh, another example is a rather small poverified of Olaf Christensen. Uh, it shows how nicely glass uh, can be implemented and you see the lighting has actually has produced some caustics. Uh, quite amazing. Uh, also this by Olaf Christensen, so it shows kind of some stone texture for a surface. This is a quite amazing example of Jonathan Hunt. Uh, Povere was actually computing where the stones have to be placed so that they don't intersect. So, so they are randomly placed, but they, they are moved around so they don't intersect. Co computationally quite costly. And my office machine was just, again, r running this for about a day for that, for that picture. So here's a close-up of these stones. A pond done by Gilles Tran. Plants are all implemented very nicely in detail. It's amazing. Uh, another beautiful example of Jean Vive Picker uh, illustrates lightning, uh, how, how lightning can be done nicely. This is a classic by Jean Vive Picker. It shows some pictures. Uh, I've actually modified this in a couple of places, like the monitor pictures, the, 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 the picture frames, etc. So there are various things where I've just changed the texture <laughs> for fun. But it's an amazing, uh, it's amazing uh, scene, office scene. Uh, so another. Uh, this is a, 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 also an older, uh, from before 2000, a clock scene by Kevin Ortner. I just changed some textures and also changed the, the, the paper things. So this is actually now a, a writing of Einstein, uh, but you see kind of the detail uh, here. Some cars, uh, Jean Vive Picker again. So it shows uh, kind of how nicely you can implement surfaces and variations. Uh, this is a kitchen scene, a famous scene from Jean Vive Picker. Uh, you see here some details. Everything is implemented fantastically. I also changed here some some things, like you see the cereal. Uh, and uh, this is a, an example of illustrating macros. This is a library macro of uh, Gilles Tran. So the, there's a text file which gives you just the titles of books. So I just put some titles in and. And uh, so this, the scene then, then places the books randomly and also some random uh, colors to the, to give co random colors to the books. Uh, here we see how some parameter changes produce, can produce a night scene. Uh, so this is an early work of uh, uh, Jean Vive Picker. I've just changed some parts like the, the billboard here, but this is on day, ren rendered uh, during day. And uh, so, uh, the bonsai scene also from JMB Picker, also an early work of his. And this also, uh, he actually had used the modified ray tracer with more features. I just reduced it a little bit so it's less actually precise than his original his original work. Here a modification of a scene from Jill Drown from 2006. It shows just how powerful uh, uh, the interaction of light with glass can be I added just this text mass 22 and uh, here you see some detail uh, features. This is it, the end. Uh, I hope it waters your mouth to try it out yourself.